We're here today to, uh, for a brief demonstration on how to configure the uh, Pico Warp Pager. The equipment involved right now is obviously the Pico Warp Pager um, system designed to be installed at the customer premise uh, along with uh, two polycom phones here and then in order to demonstrate the overhead paging functionality I have just attached a basic uh, PC speaker system to the line out uh, jack on the back of the Pico Warp Pager. In order to configure the, the Warp Pager today, we're going to use a USB stick. Right now, this is also configurable by a, a TFTP server, but for the purpose of a, a visual demonstration, we're just going to use the uh, USB configuration today. First off, to uh, configure the, the Pager is we would need the SIP user agent account credentials from the uh, hosted service provider. In this case, uh, we have our system is going to connect to a PBX that we have in-house with these credentials. First off, what we'll do is we'll start creating the two files that are required for configuration. These files are called config.cfg file. This file will contain all of the SIP user agent account information. The second file involved will be the config.phones file. This file will include all of the, the paging targets, or in this case, polycom phones that we will, we will target for paging. In the config.config file, we will start off with there will be a username which typically is, is the extension or uh, directory number assigned by the host, host service provider. There is the authentication username, the authentication password. These will be assigned by the host, host service provider. In this case the authentication username is the same as the extension number. Uh, and the password is uh, a basic password of password 1234. Next is, is our parameter value of domain. This is the address that you are going to register with uh, Broadsoft or Metaswitch or your hosted provider of choice. In this case we have a basic IP address assigned. This can also be a fully qualified uh, domain name. There is a DNS queries that are done by this box that will resolve any address that you put in. The fifth parameter, domain proxy, is there if in fact you do have a proxy that your warp pager will be connected to. If you put an address or a fully qualified domain name in this parameter then all SIP packets will be sent to this proxy address. The domain name will still be used as the registration account. If in fact you want to change the, uh, the caller ID that the warp pager sends to each of these phones on page time, this is the value. The default value actually is warp-pager if you would like to change that. Uh, you can input any uh, character string that we, you would like. The answer string, this parameter is used to generate a SIP alert info header. In Polycom's instance, in order for paging to take place, the SIP configuration files that has to have a string that identifies auto answer. In this case, we have chosen ring answer. The hash, or the pound, indicates space. So whenever these Polycom phones receive a, a SIP header with alert info, ring space answer, that signifies page and these these phones will be will then begin to page. Uh, the expiration parameter uh, is set to 1200 seconds here. Default is 30 seconds. Uh, this is the time that the warp pager will refresh its registration with the, the host service provider. Uh, there's also a DTMF mode tag. These last two parameters are optional. In this case, auto reflects that you will use RFC 2833 or in-band signaling for your DTMF digits, for reception that is. And if you wanted to change this, you could change it to info, if SIP info messages were used as your dial digits. But in 99.9% .9 of cases, auto or RFC 2833 would be used in this case. Once you have your SIP credentials file done, uh, you'd move on to your config.phones file. In this file, you'll target all of the phones that you wish to page. Once the MAC address of each phone is collected, you would input it in this file. Each new line will have a different MAC address which corresponds with each phone in the page as a target page. It will be the MAC address of the phone, comma, the extension or DN number of the phone, and then the following parameters signify the page groups that these phones will be members of. So in this case, this Polycom phone has an extension value of 101 and he's a member of page groups 0, 1, and 3. The second phone in our demonstration has the extension value of 102 and is a member of pager groups uh, 0, 2, and 3. The pager model that we're demonstrating today is the 30SC. This model does in fact support zone paging or group paging. This model supports 10 separate uh, page zones, uh, zones 0 to 9. Uh, zones 0 and 1 will both include the overhead speaker, 
and the remaining zones will be made up of phone targets or polycoms in this case. Each of these zones can have a maximum of, of 30 targets and uh, that they're totally configurable to the user. Now that we've completed our account information and we've we've defined our paging targets. Simply save these files on the base directory of uh, a common USB stick and we will take it and plug it into the warp. If you look on the LCD screen of the warp pager, you will see that on the top line it lists the model number that we are using today which is the 30SC. It also has the software revision number which in this case is 1.3.0-50. This screen uh, does provide the ability to toggle to provide uh, numerous points of information. Uh, right now, if I press the button next to the green status LED, it'll in turn give us the IP address. Now this box uh, has booted via DHCP and the address that it received from the DHCP server is 192.168.68.190. Uh, if we toggle once more, we have SIP registration status of the unit. Currently you can see that this unit is not registered with any hosted service provider. If we toggle again, the LCD screen is updated with current errors that might have taken place in the box. Now what these errors are indicating right now are uh, error 1, uh, it was unable to reach a TFTP server. In our case we're using USB so there actually isn't a TFTP server to reach. And 4 is that the box failed to register with its SIP, SIP uh, service provider. So these are, in our situation, expected errors, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, insert our USB key at this moment. When the USB key is plugged in, uh, the Warp Pager will download the configuration files. It will uh, use the credentials found in the config.config file and use the SIP user, user agent account information to register with the host service provider. Uh, it will also utilize the the MAC addresses and DNs and, and group numbers in the second file, config.phones, to establish the, the targets uh, and the, their associated page groups. So at this moment, we'll plug in the USB key into the back of the world. At this point in time, the display should update with USB updating. So right now you can see that the LCD screen has now changed to US, USB update running. And now you can see that the pager has completed its, uh, its conf download and com configuration. Uh, you can see that uh, the screen has been updated with USB update done. And to finish com config, remove the USB and reset the box. So then that's what we'll do. So we'll remove the USB key. And I will get my reset tool. And there's a reset button on the rear of this box. Now you can see that the Warp Pager has now uh, commenced its reboot cycle. Uh, you will see Please Wait loading on the screen. Uh, once the Pager has, has uh, fully booted, uh, you'll be back with the original screen that we showed where it shows the Pager model number and the software version number. Now you can see that the Warp Pager has completed its reboot cycle and has, at this point in time, should have registered with the host service provider. Uh, did a scan of the local area network and found each of its page targets and then uh, established the groups according to what was input in the config.phones file. So what we can do actually right now is we can toggle through the list of uh, LCD op op screen options to the registration status. You can see that we have the same IP address that we had previously. Now you can see that we have a status of registered equals yes. This means that the warp pager successfully registered with the host service provider. At this time we can uh, place a test call to the warp pager. Um, from my laptop I have a SIP soft phone running. Uh, I will call the uh, extension or directory number of the warp pager, which in this case is 103. Please enter the group number you wish to page. I am going to select group 3, which which includes both polycom phones. Testing, testing, one, two, three. You can see that our audio is coming through loud and clear. And if you if you did notice, you heard a page notification tone just prior to paging streaming through the, uh, the speakers of the polycom phones.